Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, we want to first of all begin by saying welcome to you to our regularly scheduled public uh, meeting of the Freeport Cattle Parish Metropolitan Planning Commission meeting. Uh, we apologize for getting uh, running a little late, but we were involved in an executive session upstairs and uh, wanted to make sure that we were attending the business as best we know how to do and, and as we move forward in the future. It is customary that we begin our session with the uh, uh, with a prayer and um, uh, with an opening session or with an invocation. We'll have an invocation uh, done by Ms. Jackson and a pledge of allegiance by my, this gentleman to my far right. If you would care to join us, please stand. Our Father, which art in heaven, we come to you thanking you for everything, Lord. What we do ask of you, Lord, is that you guide our, guide our decisions that we make today. Guide us as we go through this meeting, Lord, have it to be what you would have it to be. Lord, strengthen our bodies, heal our bodies where, you may need, where they may need strengthening, and let us use them for your good works, Lord. And I ask of you, Lord, to all of those that are here today, bless them as they depart this place as they came. And these blessings we ask in your name. Amen. 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 Led allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. This particular time, um, I'd like to share some opening remarks with uh, all of us for public hearing agenda items. If you wish to make public comments on an application, we have MPC comment slips at the speaker stand next to the podium when you come in or right down front. For further notification purposes, it is very important that you fill out a slip and drop it in the box when you come forward to speak. Please state your full name, mailing address, and zip code before addressing the board. We will call each case on the agenda in order and hear first from the applicant, then those speaking in favor. 10 minutes are allocated for the principal spokesperson and three minutes for each additional speaker. We will then hear from those wishing to speak against an application. Again, 10 minutes will be allocated for the principal spokesperson and three minutes for each additional speaker. One representative of the application can then speak in rebuttal if desired. After hearing comments on each case, the board will then immediately deliberate and vote on that case before moving <coughs> excuse me, on to the next case on the agenda. Please note that when the board is deliberating, members of the public are not permitted to make comments. <coughs> Any member of the public may request a copy of the board's decisions on a particular case by contacting our office at 318-673-6480 after 1 p.m. tomorrow or by accessing our website at shreveportcattlempc.com. Can you get me a bottle of water? Sure. Here you go. <coughs> Thank you. <clears throat> for consent agenda items and other agenda items not requiring a public hearing, public comments can be made upon request by filling out an MPC comment slip. If comments are requested for a specific agenda item, the chair will offer an opportunity for those comments prior to the commission taking action on the agenda item. All of the MPC's board's zoning recommendations are submitted to either the City Council or the Parish Commission for final decision depending on the location of the property in question. Please note that it is your responsibility to contact the appropriate governing body about their procedures as related to the matter you are concerned with. Copies of the document and the phone numbers to 
Contact the governing bodies are available on the table next to the podium and in the entryway of this room. As a courtesy, please remember to turn off your cell phones while the MPC board is in session. The commission values your testimony and appreciates your compliance with these guidelines. And having shared those with you, I want to uh, call for an approval of minutes from the past board meeting. Make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Everson and second by Mr. Moss. All those in favor, please vote yes. <coughs> Thank you, that motion carries. This particular time, um, we'll move into our public hearings, cases. Uh, item number six, case number 21-191-C. <coughs> this is an appeal. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. If you would just allow me just a brief second uh, as we try to make these hearings more efficient and make sure that all the applicants in these hearings understand everything that we have in reference to the cases uh, prior to the applicant coming forth uh, we will have the planner that actually accepted the application do a analogy of the case for you this process of the hearing will be uh, uh, administered uh, overseen by deputy director Stephen Jean but I wanted to share with you and the audience that uh, a planner will come prior to them coming to, to uh, make their request before you. Thank you, sir. We can uh, move forward with that. And in, ca in the case of 21-191-C, I have a letter that was forwarded to me from Mr. Jeffrey D. Westmoreland of Wiener, Weiss, and Madison, if you would allow me, uh, I would like to read the letter of request to you. Yes, sir. The above captioned matter, MPC appeal number 21-191-C, Busy Bees Daycare, is currently on the agenda for the MPC meeting scheduled on Wednesday, May 4th, 2022. The parties to the appeal are still working to complete the settlement documentation. In light of the anticipated settlement, the parties hereby request that the MPC hearing on case number 21-191-C be deferred and continued to the next reg regularly scheduled MPC meeting on June 22nd, so that the parties may preserve their appeal rights until the settlement is finalized. Council for all parties have been contacted <coughs> and they agree with this request. Sincerely yours, Jeffrey D. Westmoreland. So right, basically, they are requesting a deferral and continue. <coughs> They've worked out uh, an agreement, but they need an additional month in order to uh, confirm the agreement. But well, please help me if it's, if it's traditional, if we have someone here who came specifically for that, we allow them an opportunity to have any say so before yes, we sir. defer. Yes, sir. I was to told that no one would be here, but uh, please, by all means. All right. Before we call for a motion from board members, is there anyone present in the audience who is here in, rel in relationship to case number 21-191-C? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll call for a motion to defer and continue. I'd like to make a motion to defer and continue. Motion by Ms. Jackson. Second. Second by Mr. Sater. All those in favor, please vote yes. Oppositions, no. That motion carries. Thank you very much. This particular time, I'll move to item number seven, case 21-219C zoning request <coughs> and I believe we have a planner to do a preliminary presentation y yes mr. chair but before before this the planner starts on that I would like to just make a couple of, of comments about this case uh, yes, this sir. may seem familiar to several of you on the board this case was in front of you previously 
uh, but when we began to move it forward to the governing body, we uh, we found an error in the the posting of the legal ad, um, and because that was not posted appropriately, it has to be uh, reheard by you uh, before it can move on to the governing body. Um, so, if this seems familiar as we begin to go through it, many of you have seen this before, but uh, we still wanted Mr. Austin Chen to be able to kind of run through the case and jar your memory a little bit, uh, or if you've never been exposed to it before, to, to understand what it is. Mr. Austin Chen, please. All right. Uh, Austin Chen, uh, City Planner 1, uh, 505 Trevor Street, 71101. For the case 21-219-C, the applicant, they are requesting rezoning their property from R-2 to C-2 for medical office. Um, the, uh, the zoning is, uh, is, is designed for the medical office and uh, they do host a neighborhood meeting. Uh, there were six, uh, six community members attend the meeting and they all show their, uh, their support in this case. Um, and, the and based on all the information we have, we suggest approve this case. Is there any question for Mr. Chen? Okay, that's all we have on staff comments, sir. All right, sir. Thank you. Is anyone present to carry this, uh, address the board relative to this case? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, board. I'm Dr. Burnham the person that's requesting the rezoning. Um, my brother owns the property, so. Would you mind sharing your address and what have you with us, please? Um, the address, my current address is 1108 Island Park Boulevard, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71105. All right. Board members, any questions for the applicant? Representative. <laughs> If not, thank you so much. Is there anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? <clears throat> Is there anyone present who care to speak in opposition to this request? Any opposition to this request? Hearing none, thank you very much. Board members, what's your pleasure? I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve. All right. We have a motion by Mr. Everson, second by, second by Mr. Moss. All those in favor, please vote yes. Opposition to no. That motion carries. Thank you, board members. We'll move on to item number eight, case number 22-23. Dash C, zoning request. Mr. Jean? Uh, Alice Correa will be presenting this case today. Um, Ms. Witt is not available today. Okay. Um, good afternoon. Uh, Alice Correa from NPC staff. Um, the applicant is requesting rezoning from rural agricultural to heavy industrial. Uh, as you can see from the area, there is existing heavy commercial zoning and across the street, heavy industrial zoning. Right now, there are no plans to develop the property uh, just for unspecified use, but uh, the request for heavy industrial zoning is in keeping with the existing zoning and uses in the area. All of the existing uses would be compatible with the uh, I-2 zoning. So the staff is recommending approval of this request. Thank you very much. At this particular time, the applicant, Mona Caraway, is anyone present to, in that person or representing that person? Please come forward. I'm uh, Grace Eiler, um, <clears throat> 126 Peterson Drive, Benton, Louisiana. <coughs> Uh, this is property that's uh, been in our family I own with my siblings and we just wanted to get it rezoned for marketing purposes since that's what everything is out there. Miss Eiler, is, it, is that correct? Mm -hmm. E-Y-L-E-R. Mm -hmm. 
Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Island? All right. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else present to care to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else present to care to speak in favor of this request? Anyone present to care to speak in opposition to this request? Anyone present to care to speak in opposition? Hearing none, we'll call for a motion. Uh, board members, any comments prior to the motion? All right. Move I'd, like to to motion. I'd like to make an approval for the rezoning. All right. We have a motion for Ms. Jackson, a second by? I'll second. Mr. Everson, all those in favor, please vote yes. Oppositions, no. That motion carries. We'll move on to case number 22-52-C, zoning request. Mr. Dean? Yes, uh, this case is uh, a rezoning request from R17 to C1. <coughs> uh, Ms. Alice Correa will be presenting the case. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, the applicant is requesting uh, rezoning from R17 to C1 on the corner of West 71st Street and St. Vincent Avenue for the purposes of opening a barber shop. As you can see, it is on the edge of a residential area, but it's directly across from a commercial and industrial area. And there is a commercial corridor along West 70th, one block to the north. Um, this application, um, a C1 zoning is meant to be a buffer between residential and heavier commercial and industrial uses. So rezoning to the C1 would serve that purpose. It also is intended for neighborhood type establishments, of which a barber shop is uh, also qualifies for that. So based on the assessment of the existing area, we recommend approval for this application. Thank you. At this particular time, we'd invite uh, Mr. Victor Carmack forward, please, if he's present. <clears throat> Give us your name and address, sir, please. Yes, uh, <clears throat> Victor Carmack, uh, 253 West 71st Street, Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, 71106. Tell us why you're here. Uh, well, the property in question, uh, I'd like to put a nice family oriented, you know, barber and beauty shop for. The family, uh, decent, clean, and you know, somewhere anybody can come and enjoy a hairdo, a haircut, kids included. All right. Any questions for Mr. Carmack, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen? I have a question. So, do you operate a barber shop now? Or yes, yes, you do. I, yeah. And you got to relocate? Yes. Well, ever since the pandemic, everything kind of, so, yeah. So this would be a new, new deal. Okay, thanks. All right. Anybody else have questions for Mr. Carmack? Don't run off so fast, Mr. B. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're a little nervous. <laughs> We're going to get you to relax just a little bit. Anybody else have any questions? Mr. Carmack, I do. Um, do you live in this? Do you live in this area where you're trying to get the um, the yeah. land? Please? Yes, it's uh, actually within walking distance from where I live. Okay. Uh, All right. Anyone else? All right, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else present to care to speak uh, in favor of this request? Anyone else present to speak in favor? Anyone present to care to speak in opposition to this? Uh, business going in there. Anyone else? Anyone present? Care to speak in opposition? Hearing none, board members, what's your pleasure? Move to approve. All right. We I have a motion by Mr. Moss and second. a second by Ms. Second. Jackson. All those please vote yes, opposition no. All right, that motion passes. Mr. Carmack, good luck to you in your business. All right, we'll move on to um, item number 10, case 22-66-C, zoning request. Mr. Dean? 
Yes, I want to make a, a comment about this case before we actually get into it. I just want to, this is a testament to, uh, to applicants working with staff members and being sensitive to the neighborhood. This originally, this request was for R2. And after we uh, evaluated it in a preliminary basis and then we talked to Mr. Clark, we reached out to the applicant and they revised their application to uh, RUC, which is a residential urban core, which we think works a lot better. And I'll have, I'll have uh, Mr. Austin Chen explain the case. All right, uh, Austin Chen, City Planner 1, uh, 505 Trevor Street. Um, so the applicant is requesting rezoning from R-1-7 from R to RUC. Uh, the RUC zoning is designed for, some, for something higher than single family residential, but lower than multi-family residential. So um, in, in this case, as you can see from the zoning map, it's right, uh, right across the street. It's a huge apartment com complex over there. And uh, this RUC can actually become part of the buffering between the apartment and to the uh, single family residential area. And also uh, the applicant, they host a neighborhood meeting, but nobody attend the meeting. Therefore, uh, there's no opposition state during the meeting. Um, and uh, uh, let's see. And uh, the applicant also um, provides several um, building evaluation. I believe it's it's already in your uh, in your package. Uh, if you want, you can have a look. But based on uh, all the information we have, we suggest approve this case. Any questions for me? All right, sir. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you, sir. This particular time, we'll call the applicant forward or its representative. Uh, I'm going to. Give a shot at it. Underdog Apparel Company. All right. <laughs> Santana Therese View. My address is 235 West Van Buren Street. Uh, that's in Chicago, uh, 60607, Chicago, Illinois. Would you uh, repeat your last name for us again, please? Santana Therese View. Santana. All right. Go right ahead and tell us a little bit about what, why you're here. Yes, I want to say uh, what Stephen Jean said. He's so correct. I want to give props to Austin Chin. First time meeting him, but he was such an asset to helping me through this process and also helping make adjustments to make something that works for the community. I'm a product of City Grove, and um, I grew up here. My grandmother's house was there on Naomi Circle. Um, I'm, I'm proud of the community, not so much what it's come to, but being able to possibly bring something to it that can uplift the community. Uh, we really much, we're doing the rezoning to, to make so that we can put duplexes on the land. There's three lots, we want to put duplexes on each. They're two-story, modern. Um, I'm excited, I'm excited for it. Um, we'll be probably be working with um, the Stroy, Stroy Builders, I don't know if any of you are familiar with them, but they're right here local. Uh, and they know all the ins and outs to make sure that everything lines up with community regulations or city regulations, rather. All right, sir. Any questions for Mr. Santana? Yes, Mr. Santana. So, Mr. Moss, um, is this your first project, or do you have a real estate project? It is, first yes. Real estate project. Yes. Okay. Which is, which is why I feel comfortable meeting with Stroy. Deacon. Well, he's deconstructed me. I went to Greater New Zion Church where he also goes. So he's deconstructed me, but he's a builder. So um, he has the experience that I don't have in this particular project. It's always good to have people, smarter people around you. And I'm happy to have him working with him. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Well, sir, thank you very much. Is there anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Is there anyone present who care to speak in opposition to this request? Any opposition to this request? Hearing none, any discussion, questions, comments, board members? <coughs> Hearing none, we'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. A motion second. by Mr. Moss, second by Ms. Jackson. All those in favor, please vote yes. Oppositions, vote no. That motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Jean. Hey, the next case from Winter Circles International Inc. is uh, a rezoning from C4 to I1. The presenter will be Alice Correa <coughs> in, in place of Lauren Witt today. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. This property is down uh, West 70th. It's nestled between uh, Interstate 20 and West 70th. The original property was originally zoned I-2. It was part of a rezoning when they built the Splash Kingdom Park to, rezone, to, co to commercial use for that uh, establishment. However, it was no, never developed as part of that uh, project. So the applicant would like to request to get the property rezoned back to uh, industrial for the purposes of a heavy truck repair shop and office. As you can see from the map, uh, this is compatible with the area. There is some light industrial across the way, as well as the heavier commercial uses. So a truck repair shop or the rezoning to I-1 for a truck repair shop would not be uh, inconsistent with the area. So we are recommending approval of this application. All right, Mr. Rose, thank you very much. Mr. Chair, yes, and, sir. and I just want to make sure that because some of the board members have dealt with similar issues. This is not a restoration zoning case. This is a case where the applicant is the one that re did rezone the property down, um, and so that they're the, they're wanting to uh, sell off this to a different user, and therefore that it requires it to come back and be rezoned. All right, okay. thank you very much. Is there anyone here representing Alliance Tank Lines LLC? <coughs> Good afternoon. I'm Chad Moran. Address is 150 Industrial Avenue, Natchitoches, Louisiana. I'm just trying, I got a uh, shop in Natchitoches. I'm trying to do a satellite yard right here on this place because I haul out of Calumet right there in Shreveport. Board members, any questions for Mr. Wynn? Any other comments you'd care to make before we move forward? Oh, no, sir. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Hearing none, thank you, sir. Board members, comment about a motion. Make a motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Elberson, second by? Second. Mr. Jackson, all those in favor, please vote yes. Opposition, vote no. <laughs> all right, the motion carries. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Dean. Uh, the, the next case is um, a heavy uh, rental uh, and service center that requires a special use permit in a C3 district. There is, there has been existing businesses there before, but because of the intensity of the use itself, it requires a special use permit, and it also will be including a site plan approval when you vote. Uh, the one who's presenting the case is Mr. Austin Chen. All right. Osman Chen, 505 Travis Street. Um, for this case, the applicant is requesting a special use permit uh, for his having rental, retail, and a service business center. Uh, it is an uh, existing building over there, but uh, they need to do several uh, upgrades to, e uh, to the existing site. And according to the site plan, he submitted to us. Uh, they already gone through the, the review process and all the cities I mean, the different the city engineers, they already approved this plan. And uh, they also host uh, a neighborhood meeting, but nobody attend, attend the meeting. Uh, so therefore, there was no opposition state during the meeting. Um, based on all the information we have, we suggest approve this case. Any questions for me? All right, Mr. Chen, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone here representing HHR Services, LLC? Yes. Good afternoon. My name is David Zachary. I live at 131 Felix Moore Road in Natchitoches, Louisiana, 71457. Tell us a little bit about what you're proposing, sir, please. Okay. Um, Redline Rentals is, we're a family-owned business. Um, we have a location in Natchitoches and one in Manny that we opened a year and a half ago. And we're looking to open our third location here. We chose this area because um, and, and we work with a lot of other rental companies, so we kind of know their business. Um, 
and most of them are located in Bossier and there's little uh, our business caters to homeowners small contractors most everything we have can be pulled with a pickup truck it's not we don't we're not into the real heavy big equipment um, we uh, are looking to open this and, and we anticipate this being our biggest office um, just because of the area and the growth and we we feel that's an underserved area um, from a, a equipment rental standpoint um, there was uh, one other uh, there was a United Rentals that recently uh, bought another company, JPS, so they've moved up most of their operations, um, the United Rental operations, to JPS's yard in Bossier, and they're doing, they still have the yard in Shreveport, but they're doing, they're, that's mainly going to be like aerial, just man lifts and stuff, not a full service, from what we, we've been told. Um, so we're offering a full service, um, just about everything that a homeowner that you might need for your home and for those that are improving their properties. All right, sir. Any questions for Mr. Zachary? Well, I'll tell you what, it's interesting to have two in a row from Zachary's wanting to move to Shreveport. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate the economic development yeah. aspect of it. Well, my son, my son just moved here from Vegas, um, and he's, matter of fact, we just met with real estate agents um, that were looking at some property. Um, his plan is to move here to Shreveport, so. Well, I want you to know we're excited to have you. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions for this for Mr. Zachary? Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. If there's anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this project, please come forward. Anyone else present who care to speak in favor? Is there anyone present who care to speak in opposition? Do we have any opposition to this request? Hearing none, we'll call for a motion. Hold up for a minute, Mr. Hold up. I'm sorry. Mr. Question, Mr. Sager. I've known the family since they opened their store down in Natchitoches. I previously <coughs> owned a rental store on, in Southern Hills, and as Southern Hills Business Association, we open our arms to have them in. All right. Great. All right. All right. Did I have a motion? Story. I'd like to make a motion for the approval of a special use permit. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Jackson and a second by Mr. Sater. All those in favor, please vote yes. Oppositions vote no. Mr. Chairman, I'm not active over here on this device. All right, just lit up now. But it won't move, huh? And yours won't either? Well, we were doing oh. fine until yeah, you walked in. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Everybody is everybody stuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it froze. Well, it was working. Just Mine is froze. Mm -hmm. My apologies. That's quite all right. <laughs> Mr. Clark, he has me beat. <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah, I'm froze. Most of your boat went through. Oh, did he? Yeah. Did yeah. mine go through? Everybody's Okay. Well, we don't see it on the screen either. Well, no, we there we go. How about that? Just a text, Mr. Robinson. Mm. <laughs> the motion carries. Thank you oh, very much. Okay. At this particular time, Mr. Gene. Yes, this case may be familiar to several of you. Uh, it's been in front of you before. Uh, just kind of give you an idea. When we're dealing with uh, plan unit developments, there is an expiration that has that, that uh, sometimes triggers you to look at it again. And if there is a significant change in the plan, then you also have to see it again. So Alice will be explaining this case. Hey, very good. Um, as Stephen stated, there's some there's some history around this property. Uh, in 2008, they received an extended use approval for dormitories associated with uh, international <coughs> students visiting the uh, church uh, at that location. In 2017, the applicants came back and requested an R17 residential PUD to allow those dormitories uh, to now be used for a rehab facility. So it received flood approval at that time uh, with, the, with the stated amenities and ordinance relief that you see in the staff report. Um, however, they did not follow through with the final site plan on that PUD, so they did have to come back in 2020 to get a reapproval of that final site plan. However, in 2020, they made a modification to that plan which removed three women's dormitories and a gym that were shown in one of the future phases of development. 
Uh, the applicant at this time is requesting a uh, approval of a revised plat that basically restores those three women's dormitories and adds a multi-purpose building. Um, if you were look at, to look at the site plan, you'd see that those three dormitories in the building are proposed in the same location as the previous uh, ones that had been approved under the 2017 PUD approval. So that's why we're here before you today is just to uh, get a reapproval of a preliminary of a modified preliminary site plan they will still need to come back when they are ready to do their development with a final site plan um, all get all the uh, amenities that were proposed from the original plans still are in effect and would be required and the ordinance relief uh, is still the same as what what was uh, originally required so the only change is the is the re-addition of these buildings that were previously removed from the plans so based on that um, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, yes, uh, when she said it would, ha they would have to come back. That that final site plan is an administrative approval. It would not come back to you. All right. Correct. Great. Thank you. So based on that, we recommend approval of this preliminary site plan. All right. Thank you, Ms. Alex. Any comments, board members? Before we call this particular applicant. Okay, Hearing none, we'll call for FW Properties LLC. Anyone here representing that organization? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, board. I'm Brian Hollins. I'm the manager of FW Property here in Shreveport. My home address is uh, 8900 Rosedown Place, Shreveport, Louisiana, 7118. And as Ms. Alice said, we are just um, back again to have uh, three cabins and a multipurpose building approved at uh, uh, Uprise and Addiction Center. It's the name of the actual rehab facility there now. The property is owned by FW Property. Board members, any questions for this gentleman? I don't know. How long have you been associated with that organization? I actually um, am one of four owners. Uh, we took over that property, uh, latter part of, well, actually, the beginning of 2020. We opened it September of 2020. It's a 61 bed facility. We employ about uh, 90, uh, uh, we have about 90 employees uh, that are, for the most part, from here in Shreveport. And I've been a part of it since uh, September, or actually uh, 2020. All right, sir. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Holland? I think prior board members have had the privilege of visiting that property, mm -hmm. I'm including myself, and uh, I was very impressed uh, mm -hmm. with what you were trying to do. I, I can't say the same for all of the neighborhood, but apparently the neighborhood has uh, embraced the uh, the presence of the development and uh, we felt like that would be the case once they found out that the management was actually keeping their word and doing what absolutely and we're doing just that I believe we're pretty good neighbors and um, we, we had our community meeting and we uh, of course we went out and canvassed uh, the community <coughs> to make sure that there was no concerns there but I think if you ask anybody in that area they'll tell you that we're, we're good neighbors you bet you any questions for mr. yes sir mr. Seda as well as you said, I was out there about two weeks ago, and I've made many deliveries in Shreveport as a rental company. I did not know the place was there and was triply impressed. And I, again, would like to move them over further into Southern Hills, but we'll take them out there. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any other comments, any questions, board members? For Mr. Hollis, thank you very much, and welcome to Shreveport again. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else present who care to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else present who care to speak in favor? Anyone present who care to speak in opposition? Anyone present who care to speak in opposition? Hearing none, we'll call for a motion, please. Move to approve. Motion by Mr. Moss. Second. Second by Ms. Jackson. We'll invite you to vote yes if you care to, otherwise vote no. All right, that motion carries. Thank you very much, uh, board members. This particular time, I'm going to invite Mr. Clark to address case uh, item number 14, case 22-2CTAC, code text amendment. Yes, sir, thank you so much. Uh, we explained to you in the pre-briefing meeting, uh, the work session, what these amendments would do uh, they're basically cleanup amendments. Uh, they're historically, uh, from time to time, 
uses become uh, available to us that we do extensive research to understand because they're headed to Shreveport and we don't want ever an opportunity for an industry to come to Shreveport and we don't have a classification to accept it. Uh, the one that we're talking about, uh, and first of all, is the data centers. Data centers are becoming very popular. Uh, we just learned a whole lot about data centers. I'm going to be involved in a on a Zoom call uh, Friday with uh, representatives from another city that has learned through trial and error on how to address data centers. Uh, but we needed to establish the classification and we needed to establish the use standards uh, associated with this use. Uh, another one of the uh, uh, amendments was to uh, come up with uh, use standards for portable beverage service facilities. Uh, these are uh, uh, snow cone stands and those type of uses. Uh, the staff brought to my attention that they had to be 100 feet, I think it is, from residentially zoned property. Uh, and you would think that a snow cone stand, a pot, popsicle stand, uh, I guess I'm dating myself, but uh, uses like this would, would be <laughs> located within residential districts uh, because it gives the children opportunities to do these things during the summer months. So we're just taking that requirement out uh, f for that locate for that spacing. Uh, the next one is, uh, and I'm doing this because the staff member that I had to do this had to leave. The next one was to change the, uh, the cut like, uh 600 foot uh, length uh, requirement uh, to from the approval by the city engineer to the executive director. This was a request by the city engineer. Uh, they felt that and we accepted their suggestion that this would be more in line with our review of subdivisions than what they're necessarily doing. So we accepted that we would do this as part of our review of uh, subdivision uh, plats. Uh, the next one is uh, with the historic preservation, the determination of no material effect. This is when a, a, an administrative approval can be given uh, to an application. Uh, it's signed by the executive director and by saying that they are not required to get a permit. Uh, and we, the last one was, I think it's the last one, was the short-term rental uh, properties. Uh, we are encouraging, as you well know, and we are actually uh, doing everything along with the Downtown Development Authority to uh, bring more residential uses to downtown Shreveport. Uh, and if you go to uh, cities around the country, uh, when you bring these type uses to downtown, it spurs development and spurs activity and brings downtowns alive. So we uh, had some restrictions with the uh, short-term rentals that they could not be closer than 500 feet to another short-term rental and we're removing that requirement in the COTEX amendment. So with that, we uh, encourage you and, and request that you approve these amendments. All right. Now, if I remember correctly, now did you cover both of them or just one? I think I covered both of them. If I did, let me get my agenda up. Okay. I had the wrong thing up, Mr. Chair. That's all right. I, that's why I'm asking, giving you a chance to <laughs> take a look at what you've got. So I was noticing Gerald <laughs> looking strangely at me. Uh, <laughs> that's all right. Uh, the, the first Cotex amendment, which is item uh, 14, uh, it was about murals Correct. and we did attend, we just returned as I shared with you all from the American Planning Association conference in San Diego and we found that uh, we get into some very uh, controversial uh, uh, situations when we start regulating uh, art uh, and the attorney that was in the session with you upstairs shared with you that that there are even more things to look at than what we were looking at, but because of the information we obtained at that conference, we're asking you to defer this 
uh, application until the uh, the meeting in June, where we can do the research, reach out to some more municipalities or around the United States, and come up with uh, something that the attorneys will will uh, say that meets legal muster. So the first one, uh, we're asking you to defer. All right, sir. And I'll be quiet, and so you can make, take action. That's quite all right. Uh, before we call for a motion to defer and continue, is there anyone in the audience who, who are present to, in reference to this particular code text amendment? Anyone in the audience present? Hearing none, we'll call for a motion. Motion to defer, defer the first um, on the murals. All first right. amendment. Motion to defer case number 22-2-CTAC code text amendment. We I'll have a motion. We need a second. I'll second that. All right. Please vote yes if you're in favor of the motion. No, if you're not. All right. That motion carries to defer and continue. All right. You've heard Mr. Clark's presentation relative to item 15, case number 22-5-CTAC. Code text amendment. Any questions or concerns at this point? All right. Hearing none, we'll entertain a motion that this be sent on upstairs. Mr. Chairman, I got a question. Please go right ahead. Uh, are we voting on the uh, um, banners? The banners have been removed. If and I'm, I'm looking at it, but we actually pull the banners to uh, do some more research on the banners. Thank you. All right. So right now we're at 22-5-CTAC. Uh, -C. I'll move approval, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Mr. Robinson, second by. I'll second that. Mr. Moss, all those in favor, please vote yes. Oppositions, no. <clears throat> All right, that motion carries. Thank you very much. At this particular time, we're at a point to discuss any old business that would come before the board this afternoon. Then, my comment is, is there any new business that should come before the board this afternoon? We're doing a, a lot of things, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, you know, and we were able to, to give you some of the ideas in the uh, work session. Uh, we're working, uh, uh, we have, we almost have a recommendation that we're about to make to the Cattle Parish School Board as I share it with you. Uh, and, and as we share it with you, all of the research that we've done in reference to uh, repurposing abandoned school facilities and plants and so forth. Uh, they're going to do a little more research. Uh, they met with the gentleman that that was at your last meeting. Uh, they've uh, checked into uh, you know how far he was along with uh, uh, coordinating with the Cattle Parish School System. We found that he was not very far along with them so they're they're getting all of his information and when we make our presentation like I shared with you, uh, he wasn't there but as I shared with you, thanking uh, uh, Mr. Robertson, uh, we do have a relationship and contact information with school board members. And once we get all of this information uh, lined out and in a format to make some form of recommendation to the Cattle Parish School Board, we're going to contact these three members uh, and make a presentation to them. Uh, they're like you. The, we have the the need, the need to protect the open meeting, public meeting laws, and so forth. So we want to make these uh, presentations to these uh, board members that I've had some contact with and moving on. If they are supportive of this, we will make ask them to make a presentation before the entire Cattle Parish School Board. Uh, so though, that's one of the things that we're doing, like I said with you. We're looking at the murals. Uh, their murals are beginning to appear around the city. We need to be able to assist uh, applicants that want to do murals in neighborhoods and uh, on public right-of-way facilities and so forth. 
So we have an ongoing project going in the development of a mural ordinance. And that's all I have, Mr. Chair. All right, I would say this, Mr. Robinson, you would want to spend a few minutes with uh, Miss Emily when she gets back from Little Rock. You'll be awfully excited about the presentation that she presented upstairs to us today uh, as it relates to that particular subject. Uh, School I, board uh, vacant properties? Yes. Yes, sir. yes. yes. Okay. She made a nice presentation. Is it's she a, your point person, Mr. Clark? Community planning is the point, uh, the vision of the office in uh, doing the research and coordinating activities with the school board and the applicant, Mr. Dugan, who's at your last meeting. Uh, yes, sir. Would it be appropriate if uh, uh, a member of this commission were to attend some of these meetings with the school board? If that's something uh, that you would really want, we would not be objectable to that. Uh, we're just going to be presenting information, not uh, getting any commitments or anything, just presenting information to them of suggestions that we have from a planning perspective on ways that they could better facilitate repurposing their, their facilities and school plans. Okay, let me add to that. There'll be a great communications piece, too. Sir? That's, that'll be a great communications piece, too. Thank you. Make sure that we all across the board unified with that. Get a chance to see us. Get our face in the place. So, yeah. I think one of the things that come out upstairs, Mr. Robertson, as it turned out, one of the sessions I sat in in San Diego this week, Ms. Carrera cited a case in Florida, and for some reason I was in the session with a lady who, where well, the school was repurposed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just flabbergasted when she talked about it upstairs because she had all the statistics and everything that was done and, uh, and a list of all the schools that we have that are sitting that are uh, sitting in a position to be relisted for whatever purpose that uh, it can be repurposed for. So I think you'll be excited when you see her, her presentation. Well, I appreciate the efforts of the commission staff and I'm um, sorry I was late today. I had a conflict, but um, a as you know, Mr. Clark, I'm vitally interested in that yes, subject. Sir. And uh, to the extent I could be personally involved in some of these meetings with the school board, I would appreciate that. We'll be reaching back out to you to reestablish that relationship uh, and strengthen that relationship with those school board members. And that's why I acknowledge you up front that you're the reason that we are far, as far ahead as we are with the uh, meeting with the school board and making these recommendations to them. Very good. Thank you. And Mr. Chair, it, it seems like we're determined to make uh, Alice Correa Emily Trent today. I, I made the same mistake uh, <laughs> earlier. <laughs> what did I say? You said Ms. Correa was talking about a project <laughs> in Florida. Ms. Correa, uh, my apologies. <laughs> my apologies. Before we go any further, uh, Mr. Tim, do you have any requests for public comments in front of you? Anyone present? I see a gentleman sitting behind you, and I'm just real curious. That I, I have something to say about that. <laughs> All right, Tim. Yeah. I'm really on top of things. Yes, uh, as we continue to to increase the the capabilities of our staff, uh, we have planners. We have young planners that leave, and we continue to reach out uh, for attracting planners from all over the United States uh, to come to Shreveport and present. Uh, give their input into uh, how we can better serve the citizens of the parish of Caddo and the citizens of Freeport. Uh, this gentleman falls under land use planning. I'm going to give Mr. Gene the opportunity to introduce our newest planner on staff to you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Um, this is probably the, the one of the things that I'm most passionate about is working with young planners and mentoring young planners. and where we learn just as much interviewing these planners as we do, you know, uh, working with them sometimes. They, they, they come with a lot of uh, diverse skills and passion. Uh, we had the opportunity uh, a few weeks ago to, to meet to Mr. Ben Kobe, who uh, is a recent graduate from Virginia Tech. Um, I didn't get that right. I hope I didn't say you're, oh, all right, good. <laughs> we talked to a lot of people. Um, and we were very impressed with Mr. Kobe and his passion. Uh, 
uh, for the profession. He did, uh, you know, sometimes people interview well and some people uh, interview in an excellent way. And uh, we were very pleased with him and we saw some things in him uh, in, in some of the questions that he answered. We, we did a different approach this time. And uh, we asked a lot of, uh, we did a little bit more fun format. And, uh, and we were able to kind of delve into how, how people think and what their character was. And, and it, was, uh, it was a lot of fun, I think, for Ben as much as it was for us. And so I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Mr. Ben Kobe. And as you'll notice, the person that just left was also a Ben. So it's, and so uh, a lot of people refer to him as New Ben, <laughs> but Ben Kobe. And I, if Ben, do you wanna have, say anything to the to commissioner or do you just wanna wave? Uh, good afternoon, um, Ben Kobe um, from Virginia. Um, yeah, really excited to get to work to help the city of Shreveport. Thank you. Welcome. Any other comments, Mr. Dean, relative to that subject? No, we're right. we're having fun, and, 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 and I, matter of fact, he's doing so well. I told I told one of the staff members to take him deeper into the pool. Okay, outstanding. <laughs> If you impress Mr. Gene, you, you must be pretty good. So. <laughs> How do you spell that last name? Uh, Kobe, K-O-B-Y. Thank you. And it is Benjamin, uh, but he, I think you prefer to be called Ben. So that, that's right. All right. Any comments from, uh, any more comments from, from staff? Uh, Just, uh, Mr. Chair, when, when I was sitting back watching the interview, uh, I did hear Ben uh, talk about how he wanted to learn about the city of Shreveport and improve the city of Shreveport. And he referenced the master plan uh, uh, for the city of Shreveport that he'd read. And I was just thoroughly impressed uh, with the interview. Uh, I, I tried to accept recommendations from, from the, the staff of when they when they're doing interviews, even though I sit in on the interviews, but uh, but I you know sometimes I don't accept those recommendations. But uh, uh, I was thoroughly impressed with Benjamin, and I think that you're going to be impressed once he starts uh, to making presentations before you. Uh, once they take him deep into the water and he comes up, I think he's going to have some great I ideas for you. I did want to acknowledge. Uh uh, you know, the person that he is working closest with and is really mentoring more directly is Alice Correa. And Alice, if you haven't seen her in action working with these young interns, she does an excellent job. Great. Oh, at this time, any comments from the zoning department? Mr. Reddy. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I was going to make a joke, but don't even worry about it. Oh, <laughs> let me start with. We haven't, I haven't given a report all year, so I'm gonna just give y'all a rundown of what we've done from January 1st until now. And I've handed each of y'all a report if y'all want to look at it. So uh, as far as the commercial COs go, we have issued 107. The uh, home-based business COs, we've issued 113. And as far as the violations go, we have uh, had complaints or have worked 210 violations this year thus far. All right, sir. All right. Any, Any other questions? questions for Mr. Reddy? Very good. Thank you for your report. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Board sir. Board members, any other comments, concerns that we want to share this yeah. afternoon? I, I will say this. I think that our session we had upstairs earlier today has uh, precipitated an opportunity for us to uh, spend a little bit more time uh, outlining some possibilities that we might be able to uh, uh, put into play uh, as we go down the road. And uh, some of you will be hearing from us in the very near future with invitations to see how we can uh, uh, certainly strengthen uh, our uh, position here in, in trying to help uh, the city of Shreveport grow. Any comments from board members? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. 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 Thank you.